So I hope you can see this one. Series parallel. We want to calculate RT given R1, R2, R3. Um, it's been the parallel part, series part, and here are our values here. First step is to work out just the parallel part. Ignore that part and just work out these two. So to calculate parallel, the resistance total of this bit here, okay, we'll call RT. And actually, because it's part of a series parallel, we'll call it R4. So it becomes 1 over. 2 plus 1 over R3. We put the figures in. Like so. This we can do on our calculator. It can be done a lot easier, I know, because the figures I've chosen. Um, the button we press on our calculator is the x to the minus 1. So what you want to do is on your calculator, put in 50, press the x to the minus 1 button, then you press plus, 50, x to the minus 1 equals, and then x to the minus 1 again to give you the correct answer. And if you do all of that, it will come to, some of you probably hopefully already noticed, should come to 25 ohms. This happens to be the case because I've chosen it, that when you have the same in parallel, you just take one of them and divide by the number of them. So there's both are 50, there are two of them, so 50 divided by 2 is 25. But again, if we do the x to the minus 1, so that's 50 x to the minus 1 plus 50 x to the minus 1 equals x to the minus 1, your answer, that will give you the 25 ohms. That then breaks the circuit down. So what we've now got is this R4, which we now know is 25, and R1, which is 25 as well. So we've now broken this circuit down into a, just a basic series circuit, and we can now find RT. So RT becomes R1 plus R4, and R4 is this combination here. If we put these figures in, so RT for that entire circuit is 50 ohms, and that can again can be drawn simplified into that entire circuit. As so. so we've started off as a series parallel, gone to a series, down to one. These are our three steps that we've taken to get to our final answer, RT. Okay, now we've made the circuit into three broken down pieces effectively. We know RT is 50. What we're now allowed to do is calculate these three currents. Um, this possibly makes it a little bit easier to work these out. We'll start off by working over this one here. Because this is the total of the circuit from previous examples, IT is equal to VS divided by RT, which is Ohm's law. If we put these figures in, 100, because this is the total, divided by RT, which is 50, perhaps this is not difficult, it's the principle we need to understand. 2 amps. This 2 amps then would be the same 2 amps that flows around in this circuit here. More importantly, it's this 2 amps over here. This 2 amps then flows out, must come back, so it's going to, 2 amps will pass, pass through the R1. When it gets to this point here, it will split, okay, and split into I1 and I2. Depending on the value of these resistors, will determine which current and how much current goes each direction. So, how do we work that one out? Well, to be honest, there's not much to work out on this one because we know these two are equal. They're both 50. So if they're equal, the current has to split 
evenly, therefore it will divide by two. So I already know, and hopefully you will recognize that there'll be one amp pass through each one. But if we needed to work it out, we'd have to do a calculation. So we'd have to work out I1, let's work that one out first. Oh, the form we use for that is Ohm's law. So that would be V divided by R. The difference being now though, we want to calculate that current. So this is our formula, this Ohm's law, but it's which voltage do we apply? Because what it isn't, it isn't Vs. Because Vs is not across that resistor. And that's what we're trying to find, the current flowing through that resistor there. So in order to work that one out, we've got to find the volt drop across this resistor. And that's easier to work out from over here. So to work this voltage out, let's call it V1, just to really confuse matters. So to work out that voltage there, V1, which is what we're trying to work out, it is Ohm's law again, I times R. Well, looking at this circuit to find that voltage there, because this one is all of that, okay, and we know from a parallel circuit that voltage in a parallel circuit will stay the same. So to work this one out, it's the current that passes through that. So this one here is two amps, because it's a combination of those two. So it becomes IT from over here. There we go. Times R4. Okay, and R4 we know is 25. So that becomes 2 times 25, 50 volts. Okay, so the numbers now are relatively simple. So that becomes V1. That's what V1 will be. And then you divide by R. Well, there's actually one, two, three, four, five different R's on here. But because we want to find the current through that one, it's R2. So that becomes R2, which is 50. So 50 divided by 50 is 1 amp. That's our current there. This one can be done exactly the same way if you needed to calculate it, because it would be I2 is equal to V1, but this time divided by R3. So V1, because it's the same thing, becomes 50 again, and it's divided by 50. And that is also 1 amp. That then means this 2 amps will come up. It will split evenly. 1 amp goes through that one. 1 amp goes through that one. And there's your answers to those things there. OK, let's try it again with a different uh, set of values. Uh, more realistic, I suppose, in the sense that it's harder to work out. Uh, 10, 25, 33, that point there. So as before, we need to calculate the parallel part first. So we'll call that R4. And remember, this is parallel, so it's 1 over R4 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Put that into our calculators. Ultimately, we're looking at 1 over 25 plus 1 over 33. And remember, it's 1 over as well for that. This is where we can use our calculator and remember the, cal the button we're going to use is the x and minus 1. So 25 x minus 1 plus 33 x and minus 1 equals, okay, this sets fractions, most calculators seem to do that now. We must do x and minus 1 your answer, so x and minus 1 again, press equals, come down a fraction, do the STD. So it comes out at 14.22 round. volts. Okay, that becomes R4. So we now know what this is. The original one was 10. So we can now work out RT. RT becomes R1 
plus R4 because we're now looking at the series part. If we put these figures in, 10 plus 14.22. Don't forget the unit, so that is now RT. What can we now do? We can now work out the currents for these ones here. Okay, so to work out the currents then, I'm going to work out IT, I1 and I2 as before. So let's start with IT, because that's a nice simple one, because we can just look at this here. Because remember, IT is here, it's also here, because these are the same circuits, it's also there, so we can work it out here. Therefore, IT using O, VS divided by RT. It's a total, a total, and a total. 24. 24 needs to be the wrong one there. 100 divided by 24.22. And if we do that into the calculator, we will get 4.13 amps. So that then is the current flowing through in all these locations. So IT. 4.13 amps. We can now work out I2 and I1. They are done exactly the same way as we did before. So let's do I1, which will be Ohm's law V divided by R. But it's which V? So it's not Vs, remember, because it's not a total we're trying to work out. It has to be the voltage that is in this section of the circuit. So we'll call that one V1. And we want to find that current there, so is R2. So we've got to work out V1, which at the moment we don't know. R2, we do know what that is, that is 25. So we've got to find V1. So let's find V1. V1 is I times R from straightforward Ohm's law. But it's which current? Well, we only know that current. We can't use this because we don't know the current going through that. We can look at this circuit because this here is all of that. So that becomes IT times R4. So look at the series circuit we made up. So that becomes 4.13 times R4, which is 14.22. And if we put that into our calculator, we get 58.73 rounded up, and this will be volts. So that then is our V1. So that is what goes up here, 58.73. We then do 58.73 divided by 25, we get 2.35 amps in that part. We can now work out what I2 will be. Now last time we did Ohm's law again, however what we can do is we can apply Kirchhoff's current law and that will be IT minus I1. So we know IT is 4.13. We take away the other current, which is 2.35, is 1.78. So there's our three currents flow around in this circuit.